Good morning, I'm Shelby Roberts and welcome to Five on Five Plus where we've got all of your top headlines to get you going this morning. To begin this morning, today is a first alert weather day. It's causing a lot of activity outdoors if you've noticed so far. We are expecting a strong storm system that's bringing gusty winds and thunderstorms right here to our area. And first alert meteorologist Joey Sovine is keeping a very close eye on conditions and what we can expect to see. And good Tuesday morning to you. I'm meteorologist Joey Sovai. Today is a first alert weather day. Looks like the worst of the weather will be this afternoon and early this evening with some scattered rain this morning as the winds begin to pick up. Some severe storms concerned this afternoon, including an isolated tornado threat. Wind gusts two and maybe over 50 miles per hour, especially near the coast today. So a very windy day. High temperatures around 72 degrees. Now those storms come to an end very quickly this evening and overnight we begin to cool down and it will be windy. Temperatures will drop down to 40 overnight with wind gusts still up to about 30 miles per hour. 55 cooler on Wednesday, 60 on Thursday, and our next rain chance heads our way on Friday. Yeah, definitely a very gross look outdoors in downtown Charleston looking over the Ashley River bridges right now. Our first alert meteorology team will keep you posted on everything that you can expect to see for the rest of the day. On that same note, sandbags are available to those of you who live on Isle of Palms. They're free in the city's public safety building on JC Long Boulevard. Sand is available at the large municipal parking lot on Pavilion Drive, which is right down the street there. They are available on a first come first serve basis. These sandbags in particular and those sandbags are limited to 10 per person. So keep that in mind. Well, also just into the newsroom right now, a Monk's Corner man has been sentenced to federal prison for selling fentanyl laced tablets. 28 year old Nathan Ott was sentenced to 25 years last week after pleading guilty to distributing a roxycodone pill which contained fentanyl. Investigators say Ott sold a man by the name of Matthew Hearn and Hearn's girlfriend four of those pills and Hearn allegedly had run out of prescription medication that he was looking to take after a motorcycle accident. Investigators say he was looking for some pain relief which is why he purchased those pills. Hearn uh, did die after taking the pill in May of 2021 and an autopsy showed a deadly amount of fentanyl in his system. Again, that news coming in just a few moments ago. Dorchester School District 2 is moving forward with its rezoning plan to help alleviate overcrowding in schools across the district. During last night's meeting, the board voted unanimously to continue with the plan. The plan specifically targets enrollment at Sand Hill, Beach Hill, and William Reeves Elementary Schools, as well as Ashley Ridge and Somerville High Schools. The plan is also meant to balance enrollment and increase capacity to support long-term growth. The city of Charleston officially has a new leader. William Cogswell has officially been sworn in as the 35th mayor of the Holy City. During his inaugural address yesterday, Cogswell highlighted what he plans to address head on, like affordability, crime, rising sea levels, and traffic congestion. During his speech, he also thanked his predecessor, John Tecklenburg, for his passionate service. And another big day yesterday, President Joe Biden back on the campaign trail, making a stop in Charleston to speak at Mother Emanuel AME Church. From what his campaign called a venue that embodies the stakes of the 2024 election, the president denounced what he says is the poison of white supremacy in America. It was eight years ago at that church that a 21 year old white man opened fire inside of the church, killing nine black parishioners. Biden's visit did draw some mixed reactions. At one point, he was interrupted by protesters calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, whereas the Israel Hamas war has now entered its fourth month. South Carolina is home to the first Democratic primary that's happening on February third. Well, local election officials are looking to fill hundreds of paid poll worker positions right now. Officials with the Charleston County Board of Voter Registration and Elections says that poll workers are paid $200 for each of the elections that they've worked. You do have to be registered to vote in the state of South Carolina or at least 16 poll workers do have to complete online and in person training, be prepared to work the entire election day, and they do have to be neutral while they're working. 
The American Red Cross is declaring an emergency due to a critical shortage of blood. The nonprofit says the number of people donating blood is at its lowest level in 20 years. There's been about a 40% drop in donations, and the Red Cross says the shortage is bad enough that it could delay medical procedures and even put people's lives at risk. There's also concern this situation will get worse because of winter weather and an outbreak of respiratory viruses. We do know that the state of South Carolina is one of two with the highest rate of those respiratory viruses right now, particularly the flu. So there are options to get those vaccinations if you do feel so inclined in order to limit um, any concerns in that realm. That is the latest right now for five on five plus. We appreciate you watching. We've got these stories and so much more on life5news.com. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.